So let's move on. Um, the next presenters are Kerry Hall and Mark Wright. Kerry is a professor in the Department of Ancient Scripture at Brigham Young University. He holds a PhD in Linguistic Anthropology from the University of Texas uh, at Austin. Uh, his academic interests include Maya linguistics and anthropology, uh, Chorti Mayan, Polynesian linguistics, historical linguistics, sociolinguistics, ethnobotany, ethnoornithology, and Maya epigraphic studies. He has conducted linguistic, ethnographic, and archaeological fieldwork in Mexico, Belize, Guatemala, and Honduras. He has also carried out linguistic fieldwork on the Uapo dialect of Northern Marquesan and on the dialect used on the island of uh, Raiba Valle in the Austral chain in French Polynesia. Mark Wright is an associate professor in the Department of Ancient Scripture at Brigham Young University as well. He received his PhD in anthropology uh, with a subfield of specialization in Mesoamerican archaeology from the University of California, Riverside, and his BA and MA in anthropology from UCLA and UC Riverside. He has conducted linguistics, linguistic and ethnobotanical fieldwork in Mexico, Guatemala, Honduras, and Belize. Kerry and Mark's today talk uh, today is titled Building Blood, an ethnographic examination of plants in medicine and myth among the Mopan Maya of San Jose, Belize. Please welcome Kerry and Mark. All right, I'm going to go ahead and uh, get our uh, session started here with um, uh, kind of an introduction uh, to the use of uh, plants medicinally um, in um, among the Mopan Maya in Belize. And then uh, when I'm done, I'll just pass it over to Kerry and he will talk about um, the use specifically with uh, women's health issues. Um, I'm just going to read from my paper. Kerry knows uh, that I tend to go off on uh, tangents upon tangents. And so uh, just to help us keep us on schedule, um, I'm just going to um, read. Okay, um, traditional exploitation of uh, botanical resources by Mopan Maya of San Jose, Belize provides a major portion of the food, medicine, and raw materials for daily life. In our presentation today, we discuss how certain diseases are attributed to, folk, to a folk understanding of properties of how certain diseases are attributed uh, to uh, a folk understanding of human blood. Uh, data is based primar primarily on field research uh, conducted in 2005, 2008, and 2014 in southern Belize, mainly in the village of San Jose. Uh, we intend to describe how specific plants are said to affect the quality or nature of blood. In other words, sometimes they consider it to be too sweet or too strong or too weak, etc. And uh, we'll also discuss local concepts of ways to moderately strengthen or build the blood through plant use. We will also discuss emic concepts of wellness and disease related to the maintenance of a perceived equilibrium in blood for the Mopan Maya. In uh, the second half of our presentation, Carrie will discuss more on these issues, specifically in a case study addressing uh, issues of female health through the use of botanicals among the Mopan Maya of Belize. Um, the Mopan Maya of Belize, let's get my slide going there, uh, occupy regions of the Maya mountains characterized by montane and submontane uh, broadleaf forests and pine savannas. Belize boasts over 3,400 species of vascular flora a stunning diversity for a country of less than 2,300 square kilometers. The Mopan divide plants as being one of two types, high forest or low forest. Um, those of the high forest uh, refer to virgin forests or old growth tropical forests that have not been cut or, uh, for farming and houses. Examples of high forest plants would be Ahmanash or the mountain wild cherry or the Shalil, the marlberry, um, the poche, also known as the hard shell custard apple, just to name a few. Since much of the land near the village of San Jose has been logged, farmed, or cut for housing in recent years, high forest usually refers to land that's quite far from the center of town. In 2014, Carrie and I conducted ethnobotanical ethno field work with the small Mopan, Mopan population in San Jose, Belize. These data added to other data collected by Kerry in four other fieldwork sessions with Mopan in 1999, 2002, 2005, and 2008. While the post-1940 economy of the Mopan Maya villages of Belize shifted from a subsistence-based to market-oriented system, 
agriculture remains one of the primary forms of income in San Jose, but now with the exportation of products playing a significant role in their economy. Uh, what is more, the Mopan Maya have retained traditional household reliance on the forest for food, health, and medicinal purposes. In Mopan culture, many plants are recognized as having an effect on strength and well-being, often due to the nutritive qualities of the plants, but sometimes due to mythological or cultural conceptions. In order to unpack the notion of well-being for the Mopan, a short discussion of blood in Mopan thought is required. Blood, or keek in Mopan, is viewed as a conveyor of energy and stamina, yet blood can be altered and influenced in ways that are foreign to Western understanding. Blood is conceived of being hot or cold, neither of which refer to the thermic uh, qualities, but rather its relation to strength or weakness. Likewise, food and drink are imbued with similar notions of heat or cold. For the Mopan, proper health is maintained through conspicuous regulation of hot and cold consumption. According to Fink, blood among the Mopan is the mediator of heat and cold, and properly speaking, it is the blood which is hot or cold and not the individual. In other words, a person may feel hot, but be, but be diagnosed as having a cold blood illness or, or vice versa. In other words, they, they feel physically cold, but they've got a hot blood condition. These treatments uh, for weak blood tap part from cosmological precedents in Maya mythology. Thus, Fink has noted that the nutritional value of various foods, quote, are embedded in wider ranging Maya cosmology, which, is, which associates the sun with heat and strength, corn and men, and women with the moon, rain, coldness, and weakness. Plants and animals all have essences and the power or influences of these essences on the essence of the individual must be taken into consideration in determining the nutritional value derived from the food which these plants or animals have provided. If the nutritional value passed from one substance to another is seen as the influence or action of one essence upon another and the essence of human beings is located in the blood, it makes sense to speak of blood as being made stronger or weaker, hot or cold, close quote. Thus building blood consists of properly aligning one's consumption with cosmological patterns and through uh, and though the careful, I'm sorry, and through the careful ob observance of specific hot and cold characteristics of each substance ingested. Uh, determining the health of an individual relative to their proper modulation of hot and cold often requires the experience of a traditional healer known as ach ilmach in Mopan, from the verb ilmach to cure. The root il means to see or perceive, and that's aptly named because Mopan healers are said to be able to perceive imbalances in a patient's blood through specific acts of divination. According to Fink, healers know how to diagnose illness by reading the blood and how to cure by prescribing the correct herbal remedies which they supply uh, to their patients. The hot cold imbalance may be affecting a person, uh, that may be affecting a person could also be due to sorcery. And healers or bush doctors as they're commonly called in Belize are also usually sorcerers themselves and therefore able to detect the presence of a curse on a patient and prescribe the appropriate type of plant, food or drink to counteract it based on the readings they take from their blood. Bloodletting, of course, is well-attested practice in ancient Mesoamerica. We've got depictions of uh, bloodletting appearing in the San Bartolo murals, for example, from the early classic uh, and 1800 years later in Aztec manuscripts. Uh, Sir Eric Thompson recorded in the 1930s that one means of curing ailing blood among the Mopan Maya of Belize was to perform bloodletting. Known from early classic times right through the Aztec Empire, bloodletting figured prominently into ancient ritual as a means of conjuring and communicating with deities and performing penance. For the Mopan, according to Thompson, bloodletting used a piece of pointed glass that was fixed into a, onto a short stick with a piece of wax. And in the case of headache, it was placed against the patient's temple. And then the end of the stick was given a, a flip with the finger to drive the glass into the flesh. Bloodletting in the arms and other parts of the body was also practiced. This was to let out the bad blood. This type of bloodletting was especially common in the case of sorcery. For the Mopan, regulating the quality of blood was essential for proper health. Uh, for our purposes here, we want to discuss specific plants that are said to be hot, which the Mopan state are the ones that build blood. In other words, their native concept um, that we hope to illuminate in this presentation. It seems likely that the notion of strengthening blood or building blood is at least in part related to boosting red blood cell counts in some cases. Tiredness or weakness are both uh, immediate symptoms of anemia, and many hot foods happen to be high in iron, but not all. The, in Mopan traditional thought, hot foods combat weak or cold blood. In Belize as a whole, 
Many of the folk remedies for increasing the heat of the blood include using medicinal plants in the form of blood tonics. Uh, let's begin by, look, by looking at uh, yashk omje, or green stick, a shrub found throughout the Belizean high forests. Its leaves are used as a cure for head lice. Children with fevers are also wiped with these leaves to cool them off. In addition, our consultants state that green stick is also used to cure posmo, a Spanish term used to describe an imbalance in one's heat or cold. The Mopans say that if one feels weak, you take the leaves of the green stick, you boil them, and when it cools, it can be drunk. This, they say, will give you energy and build your blood. Uh, another plant that is highly valued among the Mopan is the amaranth. In Mopan, it's known as Ish Kalalu, which derives from the Creole name Kalalu with the feminine prefix Ish. Its proper Mopan name is Chayu. Uh, amaranth leaves are commonly boiled, cooked with lard, salt, and onions, then eaten with tortillas and rice. Medicinally, they say it strengthens the blood and that it makes one feel strength in the bones. Um, one of the most celebrated medicinal plants in Belize is the balsam pear, sometimes called bitter melon. Uh, it's known as ish hamor in Mopan. Uh, the balsam pear is also highly regarded for its antiseptic or cleansing qualities for fevers and as a treatment for diabetes. Indeed, recent studies have authenticated its use for diabetes and as an antibacterial and as an antiviral agent. For the Mopan, however, it is most valued for its ability to build the blood when drunk daily as a tonic while simultaneously purifying the blood. A number of trees are also valued for the ability to build blood. Uh, the semi-deciduous or oat tree or stinking toe is popular among the Mopan Maya of Belize as a means of strengthening the body. The long wood-like capsules grow between 20 to 40 centimeters long and contain upwards of 40 seeds per pod. Mopan men and children suck on the seeds in order to build blood. Uh, that is to say, they, to increase their strength and their stamina. Stinking toe seeds are known to be high in iron, which would help explain its use against anemia and its strength building qualities, uh, since it would increase red blood cell counts. This is why carao, derived from stinking toe, is becoming popular as an iron supplement today. Uh, endemic to Central America and Northern South America is the provision tree, or wakut in Maya, uh, I'm sorry, Mopan Mayan which is also noted for its ability to build blood. The Mopan uh, peel the bark of the provision tree and then they boil it and they make a tonic that is drunk two to three times a day for several weeks. And they say this gives you blood or gives you strength. The, the Ajpapachina or sour orange is said to be a cure for sweet blood by which the Mopan mean a type of diabetes or low blood sugar. They associate diabetes with a general weakening of the blood and therefore weakening of the body. Drinking the juice of the sour orange is said to make one's blood stronger. Uh, another cure for sweet blood is the kuche or cedar, a tree whose name enjoys a wide distribution among uh, Maya languages today and is even attested in the hieroglyphic script. The name literally means God tree and is valued for its medicinal qualities. The Mopan Maya used the bark of the cedar medicinally for kidney stones, but also as a tonic for sweet blood. In other words, that uh, tired or weak feeling. And finally, uh, the juice from the Anona fruit is said to be an effective treatment for sweet blood. Again, which they define as diabetes, which is uh, for them considered a weakening of the blood. Uh, and with that, I will stop my share and I'll pass it over to Carrie, who will discuss uh, women and health um, in the forest. Carrie, we can't see or hear you. We see your screen, but not you. Okay, how's that? I think we're back up and running. There you go. Okay, thanks. All right, so I'm gonna continue, and thank you for that, Mark, um, with a discussion specifically looking at issues of female health. Um, in the Mopan, and I'm going to be focusing um, specifically on a few plants that are especially useful to women and some of the issues facing women, uh, um, most likely related to uh, issues of birth, blood loss, um, and postpartum hemorrhaging and so forth. Before I get to that, I want to quickly 
uh, put up a slide showing some of the data, the quantitative data on the medicinal use of 259 plants that Mark and I documented. And I just out of this, I want you to see that the most the three most common uses of plants medicinally in Mopan communities in Belize are for dermatological problems, general pain issues, and for issues related to blood, which is really our primary topic today. The roles of women in Mopan, um, they are usually related to domestic uh, responsibilities in the Ichnach or in the home, but they also have a lot of responsibilities in ritual. They, um, and the picture I'm showing you is one from a ritual deer dance. Um, they also are ritual drinkers in planting and harvesting ceremonies. They are also responsible for uh, ceremonies and rituals associated with taking care of the dead. But one of the key rituals that they are involved in is healing rites, um, both as healers as, and as also as midwives. As Mark has already mentioned, they believe the, uh, the Mopan that there's hot and cold qualities associated with different foods and plants and drinks. And again, these are not related to temperature. These are spiritual or curative qualities within these uh, plants. They believe that both men and women have uh, a, can have an imbalance in their heat within their bodies, and therefore this needs to be regulated and controlled in order to maintain good health. And various female health issues are in fact related to blood. And again, as I mentioned, this is gonna be in the form of birth, uh, menstruation, and sometimes with postpartum hemorrhaging. But also there are some that are specific to uh, the Mopan culture, for example, the Mopans say that when a woman um, is in menstruation, she is going to become colder because her blood, uh, because of blood loss, and therefore she will become colder, and that can only be remedied by taking in hot foods. And again, these are going to be hot in the spiritual uh, sense, not the thermic sense. Let me look at, look at a, just a couple of issues as we finish up today. The first is going to be when a woman has an excessive menstrual flow. Uh, the Maya, the Mopans say that the puchuch is especially good. This is the matico. A tonic is made from it. They drink it three times a day, um, and it can uh, help to reduce or fully stop a menstrual flow. The the ushtelnuk um, uh, plant, which we were unable to securely identify in the field, is also said to be particularly good at this in stopping a menstrual flow or at least reducing it. Uh, when one is suffering from an excessive flow. Another really common, in fact, the most common that we encountered in Belize was with the Yutui plant. This is the Santa Maria or the cowfoot. Uh, the, the word eat in my languages is uh, the one for anus. And if you look at it, it looks awfully like an anus, right? Um, this is boiled for 20 to 30 minutes to make a drink that eventually reduces blood flow. For menstrual cramps, uh, another plant, the Pai Fokche, is used as a skunk root, and the leaves are literally heated up on a fire or on a skillet and applied directly onto the area of cramping. If they have severe menstrual pain, uh, they use the Ishamur. This is the one that Mark mentioned earlier, the bitter melon. Bitter melon. The leaves are boiled and then drunk as a tonic and they are said to build the blood of a woman, thereby relieving her of her menstrual cramps. And this is helpful and interesting because it lets us know that menstrual cramps are seen as a result of an imbalance in the blood specifically, and that can be remedied through the proper food. Asusto. Um, we were told, I'm or sorry, one traditional plant that is able to heal the Spanish susto, which means a fright, uh, is this plant that we were again unable to securely identify, which is called the Shab Mama. We had a very coy traditional healer who would, was very guard and wouldn't share a lot of information with us about this, but he at least gave us some interesting possibilities. He said this plant, um, I'm sorry, sorry, uh, this is, uh, I'm jumping ahead. This is, um, you're looking at the menstrual cycle. Sorry, the uh, the, the coach, this is the, the castor bean, and this is the one that women say is useful for figuring out what's going on um, uh, with their, their specific female issues that they're having. And so a, a male or a female healer is able to look at this plant when talking to the patient. And based upon characteristics of the plant, 
determine uh, what the issues are that that particular woman is facing. I mean, he wouldn't go into any more detail on this, but quite a fascinating uh, possibility of some additional research here. They also say that leaves can be heated up and actually put in the vaginal canal, and that will help solve some of the issues in the womb. So an interesting plant, a lot more needs to be done with. Uh, this is the shop, Mama, the one that uh, I was mentioning up for the susto. A susto specifically in Spanish is a fright, but in the context of the Mopan and other Maya groups, it is a fright that comes from having your spirit weakened because of that fright, uh, and thereby making your immune system, as it were, weakened and highly susceptible to influences from evil spirits. This is particularly dangerous to women when they are pregnant or during menstruation, which are already considered to be times when the body is in a weakened state, according to the Mopan. The Per use, use of the shop mama as a boiled uh, drink is a way to counteract uh, that susto. Another interesting one is with childbirth, which is again a very dangerous time. They use the chalche. This is another Santa Maria distinct from the Utuit I mentioned earlier. This is drunk as a tonic also to combat that, uh, but it can also be uh, something that you bathe with because it, uh, the spiritual warm qualities of the plant if you bathe in it, it it'll warm up a woman after uh, birth when her, your body is considered to be extra cold. And it, as a side benefit, it says it actually shrinks or in their terminology repairs the womb after the traumatic experience of birth. And in terms of birth control, we only found one plant that was used in birth control. It was the cool plumeca, the red china root. It was not used for men, just for women. Uh, and birth control is not all that common in these communities. So you can have 10 plus, kids easily in a family down there. And finally, with uh, some lactation issues, the bayal or the basket tai tai is used. They will uh, take the soft tip of a plant and boil it into a soup and make it into a tonic. And once consumed, it helps a woman to produce more milk if she's having trouble producing. And also it will help a uh, mother who's just given birth who's having trouble uh, lactating to begin lactating. Uh, and interestingly, a combination of that plant with the Uyich uh, Akachikwan, this is uh, literally the claw of the grackle. These two are used in conjunction also to help produce uh, breast milk for a woman who is not producing. And finally, if a mother is over nursing, they use the Nasun, which is uh, the jackass bitter. And as you can imagine from the name, it is bitter, therefore they rub it on the nipple and that it causes the, the baby not to want to over nurse. So, in conclusion, um, and I'll go this kind of quickly, plants are considered hot and cold among the Maya and many other uh, traditional societies, of course, but weakness is specifically viewed by the Mopan as a cold issue, and therefore it can be rectified through the consumption of hot foods. And this process of reconstructing and reconstituting one's health is described by the Mopan as building blood and thereby increasing stamina and energy. And this is, as I've shown here, is particularly the case with women and specific issues they have uh, with blood loss during menstruation and uh, childbirth. But overall, forest botanicals still play a major role in men and women's health. And we would argue the very notion of health is closely associated with the proper regulation and building of one's blood in Mopan Maya villages of Belize. That's it. Thanks very much. Great talk, Carrie and Mark. Congratulations. Uh, we now have some time for uh, questions and comments. Um, I don't see any at the Q&A, but I, I can start um, with a comment and question at the same time. Uh, first of all, obviously, it would be great to see some of these uh, indications of uh, medicinal plants and also cures in the epigraphic record beyond and some others that you mentioned. Obviously, we know that a lot of these were probably uh, passed on orally or even written down in codices that we, we are just missing. Have you gone through the epigraphic record and also maybe contrasted the Mopan use of medicinal plants and illnesses with those uh, mentioned in the Chilambalams and also Highland sources, maybe? We 
done some of the comparative resources um, with Yucatec and some of the other related languages. Um, and that's been quite fruitful to see that there are a lot of similar uses uh, in some of these. Kekchi, of course, because it's there in Belize, also shares a lot of these uses. And I think there's just uh, general sharing going on in various ways because of the close proximity of the two groups. Um, we compared some of our data, both in the Kekchi and the Mopan, to the highland uh, Kekchi communities in Guatemala, and uh, we found some distinct differences. So yeah, we think Belize is sharing a lot more of that information um, coming from one of the two sources anyway. In terms of epigraphics, we haven't uh, been able to locate any of the plants that we've looked at medicinally in the hieroglyphic script. And we've been able to do that in some other areas, but not with uh, successfully anyway, not yet in the hieroglyphic script. But you're right, that would be a very fruitful area to do a little more serious research. Great, thank you. Um, there are now a few questions in the Q&A. Um, I don't know if you can see them, but I'll read them out. Uh, in Mopan, does this issue of hot and cold relate to the so-called soul and soul loss in old ethnographies? We don't know if we've ever had it explained that way, Mark. I don't know if you, but we, we had it talked about as, as a diminishing of power and energy, but I, I guess you could extrapolate that further perhaps into some notion of soul loss, but not explicitly. Mark, any thoughts? No, I can't, I can't remember any explicit issues. Yeah, it's just, it was more about strength or weakness, but not about um, total loss. But yeah, I, I can't, I don't, I don't remember any mention of that from any of our consultants. But there is, of course, that notion that with the susto where it is your soul that is weakened, right, through the, in that area, but that's only remedied uh, by the correct plant use. And therefore, I guess you could maybe project backwards and say that it would also be related that your soul is being weakened. Um, so there might be something there. Yeah. All right. And uh, Cheryl has a question for Carrie. Uh, you didn't mention abortatives. A herbalist woman in Guerrero told me that the roots of episote or uh, chenopodium were used for this. Hmm. What did you find out for this area? Oh, great question. Uh, we didn't find any information on abortives, uh, actually. We actually inquired on several cases and they didn't have any right offhand. Um, so, yeah, I've seen them in the Chorty area. Uh, there were some there, but uh, I haven't seen any. Uh, with the Mopan, at least in our data set. I would, I would add that um, there are sort of, there's men's knowledge and there's women's knowledge. Um, and even in the question, they, they note that the herbalist was, uh, was a woman. And there are um, oftentimes it's, it's, it's inappropriate for um, women healers or, or um, to share their medicinal usages with, with men. Um, and so I, I, that's, we didn't have an opportunity to work with any um, uh, women herbalists or, or healers. Okay, and there's yet another one. Um, I have read that there is some debate if the hot cold medicinal model was pre-Hispanic in origin or introduced via the Spanish. Can you comment on the current consensus on this? Yeah, the that's a great question, I think. There are some, some, some codices <clears throat> that are, that are uh, post-contact uh, in Italy, for example. So, yeah, Kerry. Yeah, I agree. It's a great question because I don't know if the issue is settled yet. Uh, the European influence is clearly documented. Um, uh, the question is whether any of it is pre-Columbian. And I think, I don't know if we have a solid resolution to that. I would just say that there seems to be a large enough range uh, across uh, indigenous cultures from Central and South America, where it's, in my personal view, it seems to be, at least in part, original. And again, it's not a big stretch that, to imagine this could be independently uh, realized. And, uh, and so I don't reckon that it has to be uh, fully borrowed, but I don't know the current state of thinking on that other than that. And there's um, a related question. The, the talk was mostly about loss of heat, which makes sense in its context of women and menstrual blood. Is there as much emphasis on too much heat in other areas of human health? Yeah, so that's a really good question. So we focused a lot on precisely what the question mentioned, but there was quite a few discussions we had in the field 
of individuals who said, yes, you similarly have to watch the balance. You can easily get overheated and therefore specific plants and foods and drinks will cool you down. So one plant can be used uh, to pull down the heat and bring down the heat and the other one can be used to heat up. So absolutely both are in play. Blood can be overheated, body can be overheated. Um, and in other parts of the Maya, again, with the Chorji where I work, they have specific plants that when you're too hot and you're dangerous because of the heat, the spiritual heat that's coming off of you because you're natural heat, there's specific plants that'll cool you down and make you um, properly regulated so you can even be around a child again because you might infect a child otherwise. So there's, yeah, there's hot and cold movements both ways. Good. And um, John had a hand raised uh, and lowered, so I don't know. If John... I lowered it because she answered my question in the chat. Okie dokie. And Max, did you want to ask something? Uh, yeah, I was curious, uh, Mark and Carrie, uh, did any of the, your research involve uh, the use of uh, saunas or, or uh, temascalis in the, in, in the Mopan area at all? Go ahead, Carrie. Oh, yeah, none. We found none, none and that use uh, in any of my different fieldwork sessions in any part of Belize. I don't know if anyone else knows of any um, from any community in Belize. I certainly don't. Thank you. Yeah, that's a, that's a great question, Max. We did a presentation with Max uh, a couple of years ago at Mayotte Playa. And it seems that the, a lot of this uh, Temascal Chuch sauna culture that was there in the lowlands um, probably disappeared after the collapse of the classic society. And then we have it in the highlands in Guatemala and all around in Mesoamerica, but not uh, so much anymore in the uh, in the lowlands. Mm -hmm. And that's that's interesting, and especially yeah. for, especially for the hot cold aspect. And it's used for parturition in particular. So in that sense, uh, it tied in. And also, a lot of these uh, different herbs can be used uh, and uh, put into infusions, and then infusions are thrown in the stones and, and used in that way as well. Interesting. Yeah, one, one thing I might add, um, there was a comment earlier about um, somebody that had worked with a, a Mopan a team, and um, he had to come in sick, basically, and or call in sick, and his father said it was because he ate an ice pop uh, on, a, on a hot day. And um, the, the, this, I think, relates to the question of, um, you know, the hot and cold and the, the, the Spanish influence on that. And I think some of this, it almost seems some of the Spanish stuff is is more of a, a physical like thermic quality, like a cold ice pop versus a hot day. Or when I was in, uh, I lived in Colombia for a couple of years. And if someone was ironing, they, you know, they might ask me to get something out of the refrigerator because they believe that the contrast of the, the hot iron versus a cold refrigerator would, would give them arthritis. Um, and so I think sometimes um, the there's more of the the actual like, you know, temperature quality Whereas the plants that we're dealing with, the hot versus cold, they're not, they're not actually hot or cold. It's, it's just the sort of the mythological properties of the plants that are hot or cold. All right, thank you.